All right, so today we're changing the oil and oil filter on a 2013 Volvo XC60 with the T6. Um, of course, new oil goes, uh, goes in right here, over here, down in there, there's the oil filter. And then we'll start by uh, draining the plug, or pulling the plug, draining the oil. And then if we come down here, um, there's a, a skid plate, kick panel. Well, I guess it's not a kick panel, skid plate, whatever you want to call it. it. Looks like it's made out of fiberglass down here. It's got three of these torque screws. Uh, you'll need a number 30 bit. Excuse me, I said three. There's six. <laughs> There's three on each end, so you got one, two, uh, where are you, camera? Three, there it is. And then if we come on down, of course, you gotta jack the car up, we get under here. One, two, three, for a total of six. So we're gonna get those out so we can get to the old pan. All right, we got the skid plate off. Uh, one thing to be mindful of when you go to put this thing back on, as we call under here, the screws are held in with these little plastic grommets. So don't go cranking them down with a drill or you won't be using the skid plate anymore, at least till you get these replaced. And then the old plug, oh, crawl under here. It is up, so back up. So if this is the front of the car, this right here is the oil pan. Got a lot of room under here. This is fun to do on the camera. So there we go, face the back of the car. This is the oil pan. You can see the starter right here. The, if I can get it in focus, right here. I need the light. Right here is the oil plug. And it's a 17 millimeter. So we'll take that out drain the oil and go from there all right so we've got uh, the oil draining there's a lot of oil in this thing seven quarts uh we got our plug out now be mindful of this thing right here it's got a washer on it do not use that washer that needs to be on there um so we're gonna wait for this to finish draining and then once it's done draining uh, we'll go change the oil filter Seven quarts of oil, good gracious. <laughs> so while the, hopefully it's not shaking too bad, but while the oil is draining, we're gonna go ahead and get access to the oil filter. So it's down in here, down in there, and we've got a power steering pump in the way. And of course we've got an intake. Uh, so the way this thing's designed, uh, I love automotive engineers sometimes, this, is, this has got to move. Um, luckily it just sort of slides up and out of this little clip right here. But um, it's still kind of tight if you do that. So what you can do is you can see there's a clip here and a clip here to hold the headlight in. Basically, you can just pull that up and out. Remember the orientation, it goes like that. Same thing over here. You can also, that way you know they're different. Short one goes on the right, long one goes on the left with the handles facing that way. And then this should slide right out. Careful, watch your, watch your fenders over here. And then uh, there's a harness. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Let's see. Yeah, there's a harness right down in here. I'm just gonna squeeze that clip and pull this thing out. There we go. Got it. And so now you can set the headlight aside and then we can pull up this power steering pump out of this little bracket here gently gently because remember this thing's got hydraulic tubes hooked to it and a little bit of gentle persuasion make sure make sure the lid's on tight we can tuck this thing careful with these with these tubes coming off the uh reservoir Go under them. We can tuck this thing in here like that. It's a tight squeeze, so don't force it. Be 
gentle with it. Make sure there's nothing leaking. Make sure these rubber tubes haven't busted. And now we should be able to get down in here. All right, so now we can get access to the oil filter. This is it. So this whole plastic piece comes up. Um, you might be able to buy like a uh, special type of oil wrench that goes over this whole thing, or you can also get a 36 millimeter socket that goes over this top part. Uh, that's what I have. And this might be interesting. I could have sworn I had a half inch extension because I, I tried, I couldn't find one that wasn't three eighths, at least at the stores I went to. And so I'm gonna be trying to break this thing loose. With this little gizmo here. Normally I would use a ratchet <laughs> extension, but I'm lazy and don't wanna to go to the store. So let's see if we can break this thing loose. Looks like this is in the way a little bit. So. By the way, if you do end up taking this cover off, it just pops up gently. Yeah, it gives me a little more room. Let's see if I can break this thing loose with this. Yep, I can. Figured it wouldn't be that tight because it is an old filter. It's not something you over tighten. Yeah, we've got it. Screw it by hand the rest of the way. All right, it's loose. Now, before I pull it out, I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna go back under, make sure all the oil's done draining out. Uh, we'll put our plug back in the oil pan, and then that way I can pull my, uh, pull my catch pan out and pull this out and drop it in it so I'm not getting oil everywhere. All right, so we got the oil plug back in. I didn't put it on video, it's pretty straightforward. You just uh, screw the little, uh, screw looking thing, you know, the oil plug itself back into the oil pan. Be very, very careful getting it started uh, so you don't cross thread it. It should go in like very, very easily, or, like really easily, hardly any resistance. Um, and then when you tighten it down, just nice and snug. Don't over crank it, um, but also don't leave it too loose. So good and snug to where there's like a little bit of a, you know, like you can't, just, you got to push on a little bit. Um, and that's essentially all there is to it. Of course, a little bit of oil will be dripping out. I have to wipe some of that off as you go. Um, so that's what we did there. And now we're gonna pull this thing out. Uh, this is a little awkward and it might, it might have to, you might have to do a little squeezing and adjusting. Probably won't be too messy because the oil's drained out, but we'll tuck a rag in here, kind of around it. By the way, I don't know what the torque spec. I'm sure there's torque specs for all this stuff. I've never looked up torque specs on oil change. It's kind of unnecessary in my opinion. All right, and so with that power steering pump tucked away, you can see how that's tight. You pretty much have to tuck it into the uh, um, uh, headlight area. So there it is, there's the oil filter. We're gonna replace this O-ring right here as well while we got this thing out. And then the filter itself should, should slide off of this. There we go. So you can see it's just a cylindrical filter. And it slide, slides into that and you push, it, you push it down to here, click, and then you just pull it out. And we, of course, reuse this plastic piece here. And this is plastic, so be mindful of that when you're putting it back in. I'll also clean up down here, so let's move this out of the way. We can pull this out. I'm just wiping around this outer lip of it. I'm not wiping down in it. Obviously, there's going to be oil down in it. That's how it works. Also checking to make sure, looks like there might be a little bit of trash right there. Yeah, there's no like obvious trash or things that look deformed. All right, so here's our new oil filter. Looks like the old one, just clean. Um, doesn't really matter which way it goes in. It's the same on both sides. Got our new O-ring. So basically what we're gonna do is take this old one off and replace it with this one. Always a good idea 
take this and hold it up. In fact, I got it here. I don't drip too much oil. Hold it up next to the old one. Make sure they're the same size, shape, diameter, all that stuff. I think we're good. Um, so let's go ahead and get this old one off. It's kind of hard to get your fingers under this. It might be easier without gloves. But if you turn right here, look, there's a little indentation. If you've got you a pick of some sort, you can slide down in there. Oh. And pull this thing right out. Look at that. You want a pick? A little tiny screwdriver or paper clip would work. Okay. So that comes off, set it to the side, and just wipe our lip down here. And we're gonna put the new one on. Um, you have to stretch it a little bit. It's kind of tight. Biggest thing, just wanna make sure it's not like overly twisted or anything, but it pops right down into that lower groove. Make sure it's seated all the way around. I think we're good. Probably not a bad idea. Just dab. Very little, like just a little bit of, little bit of oil around it. Strangely, that helps these things seal the same way like your regular oil filter that you know you unscrew on the bottom of like an American made car. Um, now, Slide it back on. Here it pop. And we're in. We're good to go. So now we'll uh, put this thing back in. This is interesting. I actually missed this before. Uh, I mentioned torque specs. It actually has it written on it, so that's pretty cool. 25 plus 5. I'm guessing that's Newtons, Newton meters. I don't know. I just know foot pounds. So that would have to be converted. Um, unless your wrench shows with this, but that's that's what it's supposed to be. We're gonna snug it. <laughs> All right, let's put this thing in. I'm just gonna gently slide it in here. Um, obviously, you're gonna have to bump a bit, bump against a couple of things. I try not to let the filter touch anything, and just slide it right down in there. And then this kind of resting there on top. Most important thing now is we don't want to cross thread, especially since this is plastic. Um, so we're just going to kind of turn it counterclockwise, which would be to loosen it just a little bit, make sure it kind of seats, and then very gently start turning it clockwise. Righty tighty, if you grew up like me. And get it in nice and snug. Until we feel some resistance. And it's getting nice and tight. Of course, you want to go as tight as you can with your hand before you put the wrench on there. And now, we'll put the wrench on. And uh, for me, I paid close attention. This is sort of like a muscle memory thing, but to what how tight it was when I loosened it. So I can remember how tight to put it back. Um, this would be easier with a extension and a ratchet which I will have next time checking for gaps uh, I'm just kind of doing this by feel I'm putting a good bit of pressure on it but I'm not pulling as hard as I can by any means and it's starting to okay now for the most part we're done we just got to put oil back in it um, and of course, oil goes in right here. I don't think I put this in the video earlier. You can loosen this and it'll help your oil drain out a little better. It really doesn't make a big deal. Either way, you can leave it closed, but our oil goes in here. This particular one takes 5W30, so we're going to put full synthetic 5W30. Seven quarts plus a little bit because it's, um, you know, this being a European car, they measure it in liters. And it equates to, I think, like 7.1, 7.12, something like that, as far as uh, the amount goes. So make sure you have eight quarts. 
you know, pour a little bit of the eighth one in. So let me go get the oil, we'll do that. And I'm gonna leave the power steering pump down here, push the side, because what we wanna do is after we got oil in this thing, of course, we're gonna check our, check our level, make sure we're full, and then we're gonna crank it up, let it run for a little bit, and make sure we don't have any leaks around this or on the bottom where the plug is. All right, so I've got Mobile One 5W30. I'm being pretty bold, no funnel. This is a pretty big gap. So if I miss, it goes all over the internet. Haha, <laughs> look at that. Um, it's full synthetic. I believe with the, with these T6s, you do wanna use full synthetic. It's, and of course, you know, once synthetic's been used in the motor, you have to stick with it anyway. Otherwise, it'll mess up the bearings and the pistons and the crankshaft and stuff like that. This is my wife's car. Volvos aren't exactly my style. I'll tell you what, this little T6 will get up and go. It's a fun little motor. All right, so I wasn't planning on showing me putting these other two quarts in, but I thought of a helpful tip I'd share with you. Um, one day I was driving this thing and it was actually in the middle of Atlanta. <laughs> and the low oil light came on on the dash. And I, was, I thought, oh crap, we're in trouble. And then I was like, well, at this particular point and moment in time, I think I would rather pay for engine repairs, if not a new engine, versus pulling over the side of the road in downtown Atlanta on I-85 and figuring out what to do. So I kept driving, <laughs> probably not the smartest thing to do, but I was also thinking like, man, I had just put oil in this, like I had just checked the oil, in, I didn't put oil, I just checked the oil in this thing not that long ago. But there's no way it lost a lot of oil. And so, uh, luckily, that was the case. And when I think we got to Lawrenceville, I pulled over and, took, and uh, checked. And at least on this particular one, once again, this is a 2013 XC60. Uh, it, the low, the low oil warning light comes on when you're down a quart. So basically it holds a little over seven. When you're looking at the, when you're looking at the dipstick, uh, when it gets down to like that min or add more mark or whatnot, that's when the low oil light comes on. So in the future, if that ever happens to you, uh, there's a good chance there's not a reason to freak out. So thought that would be helpful to share that. All right, we got seven quarts of oil in here. Before I top off that last little bit, I'm gonna go crank this thing up, check for leaks. Um, something you wanna do anyway is crank it up, let it run for a little bit and uh, let it get warm and then cut it off. And uh, after it's sat for a few minutes, uh, give that ch old chance to settle, then go back and recheck your level uh, because what happens is that oil circulates through like, you know, the crankcase, it circulates through the engine head and all the components you know, the cylinders and all that stuff that it, that it lubricates. And so like the, uh, the level has a tendency to go down as a result of that. So you want to run it a little bit, uh, cut it off, let it cool down, and then check the little again, then top it off and you should be good to go. We're also about to run it to check for leaks. And so for the sake of like, you won't be able to hear, what I'm going to do is uh, basically turn it on and I'm gonna come down here and before this engine gets like unbearably hot, I'm gonna run my hand around the edge of this uh, oil filter where it meets the, the block. So basically where the plastic meets the metal and, and check for leaks. I'm also gonna crawl under it, look around that oil plug, make sure it's not dripping from the oil plug or anywhere nearby. And also look up, make sure it's not dripping down from this anywhere that I can't see from the top. Uh, I'm not gonna show that on camera, but that's essentially what I'm doing. And if there is a leak, uh, depending on how bad it is, uh, I will start with tightening this. If that doesn't work, then honestly, I will look at uh, replacing the oil filter, which is another, you know, seems like a waste, but maybe there was a uh, deformity in the filter. Maybe there was the deformity in the O-ring. Maybe I didn't put it on wrong or put it on quite right. And usually that would damage it. And so then I would change that. More than likely, this will be where the leak is. Rarely is it going to leak from the old plug underneath if it's not already all right so we're good no leaks um I run my hand around here several times uh, when it cools down i'll check the level 
and uh, nothing leaking underneath. So no warning signs on the dash. So I think we're good. Well, apart from the light not being here. Um, so I think we're good. And so what we'll do now is reassemble this thing. Looks like I got a little bit of splatter there if I don't fill it up. Um, so we've got our filter there. I'm still checking. And of course, after I drive this for a day or two, I'll come back and check this again or check the oil level again. I'll check, check for leaks again, just to make sure that we're still good because of course heats up, cools down, heats up, cools down. That affects our rings and all that stuff. Um, so let's put very gently, push our power steering pump back through here. In my opinion, this is the most difficult part of the whole process. Thank you Volvo for this odd engineering feat. And it just slides right back in just like that. Um, Checking my hoses too, make sure nothing came loose, nothing's leaking. Also, all this, is, this reservoir is plastic, making sure it didn't crack. So like I was saying, making sure that uh, this plastic's intact, these hoses aren't leaking. Um, I think we're good there as well. Also, good time to check the fluid level on this, right? It takes a very specific type of fluid too, which is aggravating. Once again, thank you, Volvo. Um, so we got that back in place. So now we need to put our headlight back in. It is interesting. I will say this is this comes out very easily. It's going a little too easily, like I'm suspicious, but probably because they knew you'd take it out, change it all. So we'll uh I don't think this is on camera, but basically don't forget your wiring hard and slide, slide your clip back in. And then I'll drop it messing with the camera. Here we go. All right, not sure what this edit's gonna look like, but I was saying that, hey, I'm about to drop the light messing with the camera, and then I dropped the camera. So, and then I slid this in here to grab my phone. So I did move the camera so you can see, but basically this plugs back in. Uh, this has been, I have broken this off, but basically there's a little plastic piece here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, right, right here. And this little plastic thing kind of slides on and off. It holds the harness steady. So that's broken on mine which isn't really too much of a concern. It can still slide and hold a little bit, basically just as long as it's under flat under the light. And we're gonna slide the light back in gently. Uh, once again, like you remember from the earlier video, watch your corners so that you're not binding or bending anything. And maneuver it in. There is little green piece over here that one of these things slides into this top one bumps up basically just making sure it's in there because of the way these clips hold it in place from earlier um, it's not going to be super snug but basically there's a come on camera there's a plastic piece here you can see where it lines up there against the Right over here on the left uh, lines up with that and then of course just look at the outside of it make sure we're good so we're going to take this face forward slide back in just like so take this one same thing right here this one's going to be a little more stubborn nope i was wrong right here it is going to be stubborn because that's not where it goes. And you saw how that kind of pushed this up into place. So like if I pull this out, you can see how the light kind of flexes, pushes this in, puts it in place, makes it nice and snug, make sure it's all the way in. You can always compare it with the uh, two on the other side make sure they look similar. We're good to go. That's done. And so now we want to put our cover back on. Basically, uh, you've got these little uh, grommets that line up with these little uh, screw plug looking things. And let's see if I can bend the camera without dropping it again. And it just pops on. Of course you can use the oil cap, line it up. There we go. Snap in on all sides. 
we'll put our skid plate back on. Obviously not here, it goes under the car. And those are six screws and watch out for those plastic grommets. So be gentle putting them in, just lightly snug. And that's it. All right, so here's a little bit of bonus content. Uh, so after just changing the oil, I'm gonna change the air filter too. Thought, well, hey, I'm just gonna show that as well. It's very easy. Um, there are four screws that hold this box in. There's one here, one here, one here, and then one down here. Uh, they're supposed to be torque screws, I believe a number 20. Um, I've also got a screwdriver that, that matches that. But as you can probably tell right here, and I don't know if you can see it, I don't think you can on camera, and right here, I've got regular screws in here because uh, somewhere along the line, whoever owned this car before me stripped these. And so like the uh, torque screw that basically didn't hold it on. And this thing was kind of loose. It was, these two were holding it enough to where it wasn't, you know, it wasn't throwing codes or anything. But, uh, so I took two bigger screws and threaded them in there to hold this thing good and snug. So now I not only need a Torx 20, I need a Phillips. Uh, but I've already loosened the Torx. We'll go ahead and pull these out. Um, of course, with the Torx, they don't come out all the way. But these will come out most, if not all, or most of the way. We can still leave them threaded in. This one will have to come out a lot. I think it's longer. Yep. All right. And so, of course, it flexes right here. Just, and someone broke my battery box too. It doesn't quite close the way it's supposed to either. There we go, it kind of sits in. And then this slides up and you can see the air filter sticking to it. Um, so basically, the air filter comes out. There's a raised area here that fits in grooves under this. And of course the uh, flaps sit down. So it, it's oriented like this. And I'm gonna go get the new one. All right, here's the new one, much cleaner. Um, here, let me do this. There we go. Much cleaner. This one's even got like a fancy foam that to help with the filtration. Uh, didn't necessarily go after this. This is just what the parts store had available. Um, I don't know where you live, but where I live, Volvo parts aren't abundant unless you go to the Volvo dealership, which I'm not above doing. Uh, but I also I know I can get it cheaper at a parts store usually. So this is it. So we're gonna lift this thing up. And that looks, so you can see it's flexing pretty good. It's made to do that. Just make sure nothing breaks or snaps. Um, Cause you also got like a, I believe this is your mass air sensor right here. Or that may just be an air flow sensor. Mass air may be over there. But anyway, um, don't, remember, don't, know, don't remember. So this thing slides down the end. It's supposed to fit pretty snug, which it is. Uh oh, careful that you don't bend it. I almost did. This thing is turbocharged, so you want this thing to seal well because it does affect the air intake. All right. Hold on nice and snug. And not really sequence for this, but I like to start in the back and work my way out. And also at the fear of stripping these like the others were done, I'm going to do this gently. So that one's good. And you can see I'm kind of putting some weight down on this too, just to make sure that it's closing down evenly. This one is stripped, but it'll hold just a little bit. Oh. Probably have to put a screw in this one soon too. Now I'm going to cross over to this one. And this one. And I'll fire it up, make sure it's not showing any codes. I'm pretty sure it won't. Make sure there's no kinks in this from where we flexed it. Also make sure this is plastic, so it's gonna get more and more, more brittle the older it gets. Make sure nothing actually cracked there. That'll cause a big issue. And once again, go back around to make sure everything is snug. As far as when to change the air filter, I usually do it every other old change. Um, 
I'm also a little bit anal, but you don't have to do it near as frequently as you do the oil, unless you live somewhere where it's really dusty a lot, or like you're playing in the mud or stuff like that. A uh, bunch of leaves, you name it. And that's it.